You are listening to the Heart and Hustle podcast. We are your hosts, Evie McLeod and Lindsay Roman. And today we are thrilled to introduce our dear friend, Hannah Rossler, to the show. Hannah is not your average wedding photographer. She is a destination documentary style wedding photographer who has literally so beautifully captured more than 100 weddings all over the world. And what sets Hannah apart is her ability to build a distinctly personalized and recognizable brand. And in the process, she's established a thriving six-figure business from the ground up. She's genuinely living the dream, getting paid to tell stories through digital and film formats in the most enchanting locations on the planet. But what makes her even more impressive is her passion for teaching other photographers how to level up their portfolio and develop their ideal client. Yes. So in this episode, we dive deep into Hannah's journey from how she first got started with her her photography business to a plot twist pivot moment that transformed her photography style and therefore her career. And we chat about the art of storytelling in photography and why styled shoots are crucial for any photographer. And Hannah also gave us a legit breakdown of exactly how she directs and poses her couples on shoots and how to seamlessly incorporate storytelling into the craziness of a wedding day. Mm -hmm. So we are in for a treat with all the wisdom and expertise Hannah has to offer. So let's jump right in and discover the heart and hustle behind her incredible photography journey. So welcome, Hannah, to the show. Hey, hey, I'm Lindsay Roman. And I'm Evie McLeod. And we are family and legacy-focused serial entrepreneurs and the founders of The Heart University, a business education company with a mission to help you thrive in your business and life. Welcome to our Entrepreneur Cocktail Hour, where business and marketing strategies meet faith, real talk, and raw and life-changing conversations. At the end of the day, we are all in this together, figuring out how to navigate the ups and downs, the messy and the beautiful, and everything in between. This is a community where you can come as you are, get inspired, and walk away equipped to build a legacy-filled life. You're listening to the Heart and Hustle Podcast. Hannah, friend, welcome to the Heart and Hustle Podcast. We are so happy you're here today. Thanks, guys. I'm so seriously blessed to be here with y'all. Oh, oh my goodness. You are literally one of our favorites. Yes. Um, <laughs> and we're excited to jam on all things photography, all things art, doing the like the the chef's, the chef's kiss <laughs> emoji hand motion art because uh you are you are it when it comes to just like incredible work. Storytelling. So, yeah, storytelling, all of it. So let's let's dive in. But before we do that. Who are you? For the, anybody that is listening that we hasn't... We love you so much. Who are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that hasn't heard of, of you or doesn't know who you are, please introduce yourself and tell us and our listeners what you do. Yeah, so I'm Hannah Rosser, and I am seriously just so excited to be here to get today. Um, I am a destination wedding photographer based in North Carolina, and I shoot a little bit all over, both in the States and also internationally. And it's just a joy and honor. And I've also stepped into photography education at this point, just launched a course. It's been a really fun ride of a year. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. Oh, I love Amazing. it. So for those who may or may not have already seen Hannah's work at the time of this recording, let me just say, yeah, you need to go pause immediately. the episode yeah, immediately. and go to her Instagram, her website, wherever. It'll be linked in the show notes and just drool for about mm-hmm. five minutes yep. and then come back and then you'll have the foundation to fully grasp what we're going to be talking about today and the, it needs a visual. the wisdom that <laughs> Hannah is about to drop. So that's oh my, my preface. <laughs> but, you guys are so sweet. We okay, so I want today's conversation to be a really fun, like photographer girl chat or whatever, friend chat around like I guess finding your style and then maybe we can touch on like composition storytelling mm-hmm. in that because you do that so well, Hannah. And I know you pivoted, so maybe this is where we should start. Cause I know you pivoted you your were, journey. Yeah, and your and your photography from one style and kind of like one clientele to a completely different style and completely different clientele. So are you willing to kind of give us a little bit of that, like your story with we photography? Want the, the tea. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Of course. I would love to. So I started my business back in 2020 during the pandemic after I felt the Lord calling me to drop out of graduate school. So I literally, it was second day of PT school and dropped out and um, thankfully Wait, took out PT? like... Oh, physical therapy. Sorry. Oh, that's so, very different. 
Okay. Yes. Yeah. Very different. I was a science and like math nerd my whole life. So like, it's just very funny that I ended up in a creative career, but, um, yeah, so dropped out 2020 started my business and began the foundations of figuring out who my ideal clientele was. And I fell in love with like, you know, the terracotta colors and all these things and really ended up landing with kind of a boho clientele. So pretty much like every styled shoot that I put together, every wedding that I was like posting stuff like that. That was this type of client that loved pompous grass, you know, was doing all those kind of hues of like reds and oranges and yellows that I feel like was such a thing. And um, yeah, and I kind of built this brand around that. And actually, funny enough, my first company was called Wilder Photo Co. And I wanted to be like an adventure girl, like traveling. As we you all know. do yeah. when we first start, <laughs> especially in that era, that was yes. like the era. <laughs> it was. It truly was. And so, yeah, I established this brand. And yeah, that was kind of like where I started out. Um, that was like 2020, 2021. And at the very like middle to end of 2021, I ended up just feeling this like disconnect with my work. And what I felt was like, I was producing a fun environment for my clients. You know, I was like, I'm going to guarantee you're going to come to my shoots. We're going to have such a great time. You're going to leave your like photos are just like fun and happy and like, you know, really great memories to look back on. But what I discovered was like, I was missing that piece of letting people just be themselves or if they had a bad day, like, you know, and showing up for their shoot that they didn't have to like throw each other around and like, you know, all these things that like I was taught in photography, which was, you know, there's still really great places for those things. And, um, and I started to recognize, like, I wanted to build a space for my clients to feel loved and seen and heard whether they're having like, you know, they're going through a really tough time and they're doing a photo shoot to commemorate it, or they're going through like one of the biggest life's joys of marriage or something like that. So um, there's these seasons of life. And I so my first step was like recognizing that I feel like I wasn't being able to accommodate those kind of clients. And I wasn't shooting like that. And then I discovered that I was really unhappy with my editing. You know, there's these cycles that you go through as a photographer and it's hard, you know, in that season, I was like, my, what I'm wanting to achieve, I feel like doesn't work well with the editing style that I have. And I had no idea where I was headed or what that style was going to be, but I just knew that it wasn't what I was doing. So I began exploring. And what I will say is I feel like in that season, I started to break these rules of photography that I felt like I was confined by. So I was taught to only shoot on prime lenses, to never go below a one over 250 shutter speed, you know, all these things that um, like, you know, you never shoot in harsh light, find the shade patch, put them in it. Like these things that were just spoken in photography, again, never a bad thing to do. Mm -hmm. But I felt like what I was wanting to create was more than that and deeper than yeah. that. And so I just started to push those rules and like play and experiment. And what I discovered was, yeah, it really wasn't just like my editing style that needed to change. Like it was my shooting style, my, like the way I was working with my clients, the experience I was offering that then like when I created those photos, the editing just like worked. Like it was like, yeah. oh, this needs this kind of edit because of the base level that I'm like creating. Yeah. So does that make sense? Yes. Oh yeah. Which I think yeah. is good because it's like the, you're not relying on the the editing to be like an affected style. Yeah. It's like it comes, I mean, it, whether it's a style or just like photography as an art, I think it all should start with the composition and the mm -hmm. actual in-frame photo. That's not mm -hmm. the word I'm trying to, in camera, there we go. <laughs> I had to <laughs> think about that for a second. Um, like the photo in camera should ideally be as close to the end product as possible. Like you shouldn't just be like a bad photographer and then try to have it saved by editing, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I love that you you notice that. You're like, oh, I'm trying to actually change the style that I'm doing and the editing doesn't match. Yeah. Is that is that what I'm hearing correctly? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what that kind of ended up looking like for me is I was like, something's got to change. And I think that there's so much power in community. And so I was like, you know, if I can't figure this all out on my own, I've got to figure out a way to bring in other people in this process. So I ended up setting up a ton of styled shoots with friends and then attending like 
eight different styled shoots back to back, like within a week or two week span, basically. Oh, wow. So it was like over Christmas break, like right before it, like December early. And, Wait, and you set them up. So half and half. So like I decided to set up a few myself with some friends and then all of us like went to like a content day here, drove further, went to like two more content days and then like traveled back home. So it was like really like this two week like creative exploration and those weeks changed everything for my business and it was crazy. So like just starting out one, I started setting up styled shoots that were like very out of my comfort zone. Um, like things I'd never done, you know, things I had probably seen somewhere else in some capacity, like, you know, um, creatively, but like in general, I just was like, I want to do something that's not just like me and a couple in a field or like something like that. So added a lot of like props and different things. And what I started doing was like during those shoots, instead of me being like worried about getting the shot or whatever, I was watching everyone. I was like, how are they shooting? What are they doing? How are they approaching this? And I would be like, hey, what are your camera settings if you're willing to share with me? Like, can you tell me what you're doing right now? Like, I see you're using the light in some way. Like, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And it just became this like observation of like, how are people shooting? What are the differences? Like, what do I love about this photographer? What do I love about this? And the way that they're approaching the situation. And I learned so much through it. Like, it was like way less about, yeah, the content I was gaining that week and so much more about like, yeah, just observing like the patterns and habits that people have and the way that they pose and see the frame because we all see things differently. And that's the beauty of creating art and there's so much beauty in each person and the way that they see things. So That's I began so to like appreciate the art more, I think, and appreciate the ways that people shoot differently than me and see like the joys that it brings them and the way that they do things. And then also like what out of that would I want to adapt into my own business. So yeah, that was kind of that week span or whatever. Oh, I love that so much. I feel like that's something that's like, that is in two weeks uh-huh. with like eight style shoots that insane. you were like go big or go home like for oh, real. It was crazy <laughs> yeah it was very crazy <laughs> I love that though I think that as you were saying that I just my little sassy side as an educator came out where I like you know well obviously I'm sure you experience this too Hannah as an educator as a photographer in general mm-hmm. where people are like oh I just feel like my work doesn't look the way it's supposed to or like I'm trying to attract this client but like it doesn't align with my current work or you know whatever it is and it's like go set up and creative they shoots sit, they sit there and complain about it well no it's just more like go set up a creative shoot and they're like oh, everyone's telling me to do that and it's like there's a reason <laughs> that we are all telling you to do that it's like well it gives you practice but then also it it gives you work in the direction of like of the, portfolio, yeah, portfolio yeah. work that you want to go. It's also mm-hmm. just like the the ability. I feel, um, which I'm curious to see what you think about this, Hannah. I believe that as photographers, we should do at least like one to two like creative sessions per year, like as a bare, bare, mm-hmm. bare, bare minimum. Like because you need the space. Because on a creative session or like a styled shoot where you're not having a paying client there, it you up. the creativity and the freedom that you feel of like you don't feel the same like. And I don't, I'm curious if you girls feel this, but like I feel a level of like responsibility and I would say like pressure with a paying client yeah. that like I, I'm, of course, especially if they know me and my style, I'm still willing, like, and I'll tell them, like, hey, I'm going to experiment with the shot. Who knows if it'll work out or, you know, let's try this. I don't know if it'll turn yeah. out. And they know that and they're used to that. But there's still a level of, like, I'm only willing to experiment so far right. because I still, like, they're a paying client. But well, on a creative like, session, if you, if you try, I'm like, if you try the- something <laughs> on a paid session and then, like they remember that you did that. They probably do. And then it's not in their gallery. There's like an element. I'm like, okay, well. There's just an element. Like yeah. I'm only willing to experiment so much and right. exclude so much from a gallery. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I'm like, anyways, I feel like there's like, no matter where you're at in business, I feel like creative sessions need to be a part of keeping your creativity and your like fresh, like new thinking and, and ideas that's just like, I love that. Whenever I'm feeling in a creative rut, I'm like, fr- free session, let me get some models, let me style this, you know, whatever this looks like, and let me just experiment. And if two photos turn out, great. Then I got to like figure out a bunch of stuff that didn't work. But usually you walk away and you're like, oh my gosh, everything turned out. This like yeah. something clicked and it like opens a whole door. So, well, wait, okay. Speaking of creative or styled shoots, Hannah, when you set them up, do you do like model calls or well here here's a question do you find professional models to do it or do you do like couple calls on like your Instagram or Facebook groups or anything like that what one do you how do you navigate that 
Yeah. So I've done both and I have learned for me to produce my best work, which is actually really interesting is to use a real couple. And yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess like, I've never, I've never used a fake like couple because they I think, to... well, sorry, that's probably the wrong way to say it. Like a model, model couple who is very used to being in front of the camera. Now there's oh, nothing okay. wrong with that. Like, I think that there's so much beauty in having someone who knows how to work a camera. Um, yeah. But I think that when I walk away from it, I want to be learning through my styled shoots. So if I have someone where I'm not even saying anything, you know, and they've got it going on and I'm like, perfect. Like this is a free ride for me. What am I learning and gaining yeah. out of that experience? And oh, there's like a, a piece of, yeah. And there's a piece of creativity that comes through that posing portion and how yeah. to direct. And like the more that you practice that, the better you become, which is a yeah. huge piece of why you would do a styled shoot. In my opinion is like yeah. the experience that you get out of it too is like huge. Um, I remember like in the beginning of my business, I have this couple friend who's in my town and I had them model for me probably like six to eight times in like right. a year span. And it was like different location, different outfits, like let's do this again. And it was like, you know, it, it was this process of like, they could give me feedback as friends yeah. of like how they felt in front of the camera. We had also yeah. like worked together before and they could be like, I think you did this better this time. This time, like it was a little mm -hmm. harder to do. Um, and you have that level of like understanding. So like as a that. friend, so like, I don't know, I just, I feel the power of styled shoots, but I do see them a lot as even though they're portfolio builders, it's experience for sure. Yeah, absolutely. hundred Okay, wait, I have a thought with that because I would agree mm -hmm. with that about 95% of the time. But I will say, I've only ever worked with like an actual model couple who really knows like they are very, 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 very used to being in front of the camera, like probably two or three times. Okay. But every time I've done that, um, I wouldn't make that like my norm. But every time I've done that, I feel like I've actually learned stuff because of their mm. experience in front of the camera. Like how to pose people that don't know how to pose from the, their yeah, posing? Like, like some of the things that they do that I, I would be like, I would never have thought to pose them in that way, but something about that was mm. such a beautiful connection. And so it gives me ideas for like working with clients of like, oh, that told such a beautiful story there and they just naturally did it because they're very comfortable in front of the camera. And so it gives me ideas of like how to kind of direct. And I, I agree with you again, like 95% of the time, yeah. I would be like real couples who are not super comfortable in front of the camera is what you're going to experience, you know, a vast majority, like almost all the time yeah. as a photographer. So don't make like models your norm because then you're going to just be, it's completely different. It's like going to the hot tub to the ice cold pool. Like, no, mm -hmm. you're going to be mm -hmm. shocked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think there is some slight element, like, and I feel like I've worked with like real models, you know, maybe like once every couple of years. So it's not mm -hmm. like an ongoing thing, but every time I do it, I walk away with like fresh ideas and like inspiration from their experiences and like their ability to work the camera in a way that I mm -hmm. feel like I don't always get, but it's different learning. So it's, yeah, I don't that know. That's just like yeah. a random yeah. thought that I had. I feel like from also like setting up a like retreat or workshop perspective, I've been to ones that have professional models. And like, obviously there's a lot of benefits of real couples that aren't models. But I will say like, when you have a large group of people that are all, you know, wanting different things and like mm -hmm. wanting, you know, or feel like they can't really speak up in a group, I've found that having real models is really useful in those cases, yeah. just because mm -hmm. then you don't have all these competing voices and like the models typically under understand the room like they're like yeah. we can do something that fits each and every Everyone. person here yeah. um which is huge but yeah one-on-one yeah. -on -one style shoots for sure I love that Abby that was yeah. a good that was great that's fun okay let's get into like the conversation of uh well like just style so like editing composition like all of that nitty-gritty stuff so when you transitioned your work you said you were kind of leaning more towards like adventure boho, which was literally every single person in like 2018. <laughs> including us. 2018 including to 20, us. 20, 2021, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Literally, yeah. I, I'm as, uh, I'm actively in that pot of people. <laughs> what made you lean more into more of like a, like a, because I would consider your work now a lot more storytelling based, a lot more like vintage, cinematic. I don't know if you would use those Filmy, same words. documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. What intrigued you about that? Because I feel like, and I feel like you're definitely one of the, in my opinion, one of the people in in the industry that I think is like, has leaned into this style first 
Mm-hmm. Maybe not. There's probably other people, but in my world, you are. Because <laughs> I feel like um, a lot yeah. of the, the industry is shifting that direction in general right now. Like yes. this, including, this including documentary us. Hi, timeless. We're also in that part again. <laughs> this, this documentary timeless filmy or whatever is I'm now like, oh, the Hannah new Bobo. Now I want to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really funny. But but what, because I think you did it before it was quote unquote trendy, if that makes sense. What... <laughs> what attracted you about changing the style or like what about your old work or old style was no longer like connecting with your heart, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I think, yeah, a big piece of that just was like the service I was offering and like them, the couples I was working with walking away, really being like, man, like she created a space where I could a hundred percent be myself, like whether great day, bad day, like, you know, or even just like excited, but like, you know, just that just, yeah, not having the best day ever. Like, I think that I wanted to create something where they walked away feeling empowered themselves, also like excited for their wedding in a way that they were like, man, you captured us to like in a way that I feel like we've never seen ourselves before. You know, we experience it, but I've never seen it in a photo. And I was like, I want to create emotional images. I want to create things that tell a story where, you know, I'm not like going in and I'm like, here's my list of 20 poses. And I'm just like rattling off, pick her up, throw her over here. Let's run this way. Like, and it becomes this more overall, like comprehensive view of a, of a shoot or a wedding. And it's like, one, I'm going to get to know my couples more Two, I'm going to be able to serve them better. And then three, their images are going to be the story from start to finish of, you know, the, the things that make them, them. And that's Mm -hmm. huge to me as a creative now. And I think that not doing that before, I just felt this missing piece. And until I started, so a huge thing was right after that, I had a client hire me and she was like, Hey, like, I love your work, which a lot of people would probably say this client was a red flag. And this is funny because she ended up being like my favorite client I've ever worked with and the best wedding I've ever done. Um, But back when I like started my business, I didn't know better. And she was like, you know, Hey, I really want you to shoot our wedding. I see the potential in you. And I see these things that you can do. Um, And we like would love to have more of like a filmy style. Like I have a film camera that I would love some shots on, you know, we want like blurry details. I had never shot a blurry photo in my life before, before her (laughs) wedding. I was like, I don't even know what you're asking. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, and so she like invited me in, you know, I got to know their story. We kind of worked together on this because it was something different and out of my comfort zone and wedding day. It was like, the first time I was like a free for all. She was like, I want you to be creative. You can do whatever you want, like as weird or fun and funky. And like, you know, you just get to like have fun on our wedding day. And then she was like, and here's a Pinterest board that I have no desire. Like you do not have to duplicate these things. I'm just showing you like what I'm attracted to. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and it was like the freedom she gifted me in that. I went out and I created my favorite work literally to this day that I've ever created. And like... I just had never experienced that before. I mean, it was literally like I had right before her wedding, I tried to take like two blurry photos and I was like, I don't know how this is going to (laughs) go. And like wedding day, I was like playing, experimenting, like just seeing things in a new light. And they were so receptive of it. And it was my first time also seeing an ideal client in person, like act like through their actions, their words, the ways that the, the things they were wanting. And, um, and it just like provided that spark. And then I went home and I went to edit and I was like, (gasps) I was like, it's so easy. I was like, why this is so easy. Like I'm taking, you know, the things that she was looking for and like kind of the new style I'm headed towards, um, which I was just attracted to that, like more filmy style in general. And I just started playing around and I was like, wow, I love these edits. Like they just make sense for what I created. And that's kind of how that style was born. So oh, I love that. That's amazing. Okay, wait. Can I ask a, a technical nitty gritty yes. question? Okay. For the person who is sitting here who's like, I feel my heart coming alive as Hannah's talking and I want this. I want to get to know my couples better. I want to tell their story. I want to have, you know, that freedom to experiment. Like I want 
to story tell. I want my photos, my editing to be easy. I, you know, whatever. I guess there's so many questions that could go into that. But the one that like was top of mind was the storytelling aspect and kind of the, I, that all goes very, composition and storytelling are so hand in hand in my mind. It's like so hard to separate them sometimes because it's like the composition does tell the story. So for you, Hannah, what was like, some of your advice or what would you give to the photographer who's listening to this, who's like, I really struggle with storytelling and I always revert to those 20 poses. Like, how do Mm -hmm. I go to a session and not pull out my posing like backup list? Like, how Uh, do I tell the story? Like, what does a session actually look like? What does a wedding actually look like with storytelling in mind? I love this question. It's such a good one. So, okay. So overarching, I would say before... I was in a place where it felt like a race. I was like, I have an hour. I've got to fill the hour. I need Mm -hmm. to get X, Y, and Z images. I want them to have the best time. And this is what I want to deliver on. And when I made that shift to more storytelling, I was like, instead of filling the space, I'm trying to almost give space. I want Mm -hmm. more freedom, more space. So what that meant is I had to become okay with awkward silences. I had to become okay with like trying to observe a couple and then just like minorly tweak versus giving like a full direction, um, which is what I was used to. So I would say like now my sessions, what they look like is it starts with like the education portion. So like Mm -hmm. when they first inquire with me, it's the language I'm using, almost my expectations of them that I give them in our first call. Again, it's not like I'm expecting you to be on time. No, it's like, I'm expecting you guys to be willing to, you know, be creative in front of the camera. And here's what that might look like. Or I'm expecting you guys to, on the day of your session, make it like a day date. And you're spending, you know, the hour beforehand, you're not rushing, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I'm giving you an outline of what our shoot might look like so that they are prepared mentally. And they aren't like, oh, I was expecting you to get us direction the entire time. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, if you don't tell them that, they're going to show up and be like, what am I doing? And um, the more that you can prepare them through that, through like language, through that first call, through emails, like what to expect for the session, through a questionnaire, like it's like in the way that you speak all the way up until the session, it helps prep for that storytelling portion. So like in my questionnaires, for specifically like couples and stuff, I'm diving into like, you know, their greatest wins as a couple and their like lowest lows. And I'm asking those hard things. And if they don't answer it, it's okay. And it might come out in the session, but I'm giving them the opportunity to tell me both sides of the story, the, you know, the great things, the tough things, like, and I feel like I know them better and I know how to ask questions during the session that they can talk about while I'm doing a direction or a pose or something like that. So there's a lot of things like, yeah. And then I send like a what to expect email and it's like very much, I try and give, you know, examples of what I might say. I also outline, you know, it might be more space and I'm going to have you guys do something. But while I'm having you do that, you can talk, you can move, you can do X, Y, and Z. There is like no rules in this session. So it's just a lot of yeah language and the way that you speak. And then when they arrive at the shoot, I try and give them like a debrief. So I'm meeting them. I typically try not to have my camera in hand. So it's a lot of just like meeting, hanging out for a second. And then as soon as we start the shoot, I am letting them know that I'm going to give them multiple prompts at once for them to do it however they want to do it. Mm -hmm. So there's no expectation on my end. I'm not actually trying to get them to do anything in particular. It's like for them to explore and see like what happens and what comes out of that pose or direction. So I've started really stacking poses. So what that means is like, we might start at an edge of a field. I might be like, hey, I want you guys to like run and frolic around this way. I want you, there's a tree down there. I want you to circle around that, make your way over. And then if we've had planned, let's say them doing like a canoe um, across the lake, I'll be like, and then I want you to help her into the canoe and just start paddling around the lake. It'll probably take 10 minutes, 15 Mm -hmm. minutes to get like all this done. Um, And I'm just going to move around, get different angles. You guys just talk, you hang out, you can do anything if you want to stand up in the canoe or fall out of the canoe. Like it doesn't matter. Um, It's for you guys to play and have fun. You have like complete freedom to make this whatever you guys want. So it becomes more of this like open-ended longer Mm -hmm. thing versus like right now, pick her up and turn her around. Does that make sense? Obviously like on a wedding day, you might be more restricted than that. And there might not be like, 
you know, a, an activity that they're doing right then. And it is more direction, but like on a session, I try and make it as open-ended, longer kind of stacked poses than like a specific directive. Does that make sense? I love it. Yes, so I think much. you just literally changed people's lives with, yeah, lives with that example. And even on a wedding day, I think you can do that to a minor, like say you just have the field, there's no tree. Or maybe I'm just thinking of like a manicured venue that has like a field or like grass and like there's like maybe a stone wall and that's all you got. Like you don't have a canoe, you don't have a, a mm-hmm. tree. You could yeah. still say, hey, I want you guys to frolic and, and walk this way. And when you get over there, start slow dancing or spin her around. Like you can still give like mm-hmm. a series of three like, Mm -hmm. what maybe would be like directions or prompts, but you're stringing it along. And I love that you mentioned, Hannah, that like you almost gave them freedom. It wasn't like, hey, do this and then do this and then do this. At least you're, you're phrasing it in a way that's like, in general, I want you guys to experience this. And I, with my clients, I'll, I'll like say, instead of maybe just like, hey, walk down there, I want you to pretend, like I almost give them a scenario. Mm -hmm. If, if, if it is in like a situation like that where it's like, hey, pretend you're on your first date or Mm -hmm. you haven't seen each other in a year and you're reuniting and this is your first date. Explore this field as if you were, you know, hadn't seen each other in that long. What would you guys do? You'd walk probably down there. I want you guys to, you know, slow dance or whatever. You can pull from like their questionnaire and the info that they've given too of like the info about their first date. And Uh you can be like, do you guys remember when you met and you were both walking on like the boardwalk? I want you to like feel those feelings again and then go just walk together. And you can talk about that experience and like memories. And it just like, it pulls in those emotions and allows them to have an experience. And then the photos are like there. Well, and it makes you, I think it makes you a better photographer, not only to like the public, because you'll get better work, but also to your clients. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're gonna, like that experience of working with you and being like, wow, not only did she ask like personal questions that like she cared, mm-hmm. but also she took time to actually think about that and then direct us based on that because mm-hmm. it was, it was unique. And whereas if they experience that and then they experience like a normal photographer that's just like, all right, smile, spin around. Okay. Picky, picky back up, which again, yeah. that's not necessarily bad. And every photographer is different, but there is a difference yeah. in the experiences, especially as a client, mm-hmm. when you're, mm-hmm. you're getting the, the prompt thrown at you, like, which again, like I used to do that. And like she used to do that. Like we've all done that, yeah. but oh, yeah. it's just, there's a slower pace. And I also like that you mentioned, um, you had to get comfortable with like that awkward silence. Um, and you know, there is always a balance of like, you know, we, we should encourage our, our clients, but also like, I think, especially when you're just getting into photography, you, you get nervous because you're maybe insecure. I mean, we all are, especially when we're trying something new and we're like, oh my gosh, if I'm not saying something or I'm not having them do something aggressive, like every two seconds, then I'm like a failure and it looks like I don't mm-hmm. know what I'm doing. But it's like, that's actually the space where they can learn to like breathe. And like, mm-hmm. if you set it up correctly, it's like, I love the image that you gave of like, walk around the tree, go into the canoe, fall over if you want to. Because it's yeah. like you basically just set up a scene in a story and it gives mm-hmm. you that entire freedom to do the whole thing. I have a question though. Sorry, I'm just like v- vomiting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in that scenario of like walk through the field, go around the tree, get in the canoe. If they did all of that, would you ever have them do it again if you wanted a specific different shot of it? Is or that, would you yeah. interject in that like 10 minutes of something going on to be yeah. like, wait, stop there. That exactly rubber cheek again. Like, yeah. Do you interact? Yeah, yeah. 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 So I've moved away from a lot of that. So at this point, if I didn't get the shot that I wanted when they did it the first time, I move on. And Ooh. like the reason, <laughs> and this the is reason key. is, is like, <laughs> is like, unless they specifically ask for that image, like I'm like, I can create something else and it makes it more of a fluid flow for them, you know, because I'm like, it's something like, it's a learning process. And then I learn next time where I want to stand for that shot or whatever, because then it just, it does feel unnatural. Like, you know, for someone to be like, well, let's do it again. You know what I'm like? It's like, it's this feeling of like, oh, did we do something wrong? Did we, you know, and then it's almost like something wrong with the client. Um, And then, you know, they're looking or they're thinking of you like, oh, she didn't get it. Like, we got to do this again better this time. And then it just comes even more forced. So I think it is like, it's more of like an exploration. And I I think you do have permission too to say, Hey, I'm going to think about like, you know, what we should do next. If you guys just want to talk for the next two minutes and you have the permission to like ask that and say that, and then just like look around, walk around if you need to like, you know, find something that'll give you more inspiration versus like 
trying to be like, oh, I have to force out something right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Because more than often than not, it'll feel forced as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Or like rush the experience, which both kind of hinder the goal of the shoot. So, Okay, I have a a follow-up question to all of that. Um, Obviously, when it comes to storytelling, usually some sort of props are involved. Not always, but oftentimes. Or or like a location that has something to interact with yeah like like the example like of a like carnival the the canoe i don't know why i went to the carnival yeah where, where <laughs> like was the fa- carnival that makes carnival. sense, that makes sense. Like, like, like a scene yeah. that has things to interact with. like i'm thinking like she we talked about like the canoe or you know which is a prop in the, theory there's realist yeah because i feel like props are given a bad word and we think of like yeah. cheesy photo booth but like in storytelling it's usually something for them that's meaningful to them or for them to interact with or it's you know it's not just like it's them like a picnic in a field with nothing or like yeah, like, yeah. So, so i feel like you Usually with storytelling, there's some sort of like um, scene set around them for that storytelling. Mm-hmm. But I'm curious for you, Hannah, because I feel like in in both my experience, but also with like my students, I feel like a lot of people are like, no, usually my couple's like, oh, no, 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 we, we don't, we, we're good. We're just like, let's just go out to the beach or something. And it's like, not that that's a bad thing and not that you can't create beautiful storytelling with that. But I'm curious of your thoughts of like, props within storytelling in the way that we're talking about them, like setting a scene basically. And how do you communicate that to clients? How do you, do you pull that from their story? Do you ask or suggest things to them? Like, how do you go about that in your client work? That's awesome. So funny enough, like when I look back on where I was before, I was putting together these styled shoots and wanting weddings that were like, very prop heavy or very like things to shoot with heavy. So like, I was like, I'm going to bring books and a bag and like a, you know, an umbrella and I'm going to bring flowers and I'm going to bring this. And I would like overwhelm the crap out of myself. Like I would just like go to a shoot and I'd be like, man, I forgot to shoot with like 15 different things that I brought and I bought, (laughs) you know, and I would be like, oh, like, you know, I always felt that more was better. And as I've walked into storytelling, I have learned that less tends to work really well. And because it's less distracting, it's able to focus more on the couple themselves and not get lost Mm -hmm. in the mix of like these things we have to do during a shoot. Yeah. So I think that in general, what I do try to do is in that questionnaire, I try and pull out if there's a location that matters most to them, because I feel like the most important thing is the location, because you always have things to work with in a location. So, you know, even if they don't want to do props, like, is there a tree branch around? Is there a log they could stand Mm -hmm. on? Are there stones they could skip on? Like, you know, is it a lake and they could like toss rocks and like, you know, there's like things you can work with naturally with wherever you go. So that's like first importance. And then second is kind of asking like, you know, did you go get coffee for a first date? Did you have anything that you guys do on occasion or for anniversaries or like anything like that, that would be helpful or fun to do in a shoot. And so like pull those things out. Then I read that questionnaire and I send them a list of suggestions. So I try to give them ideas. Um, where I'm at in business, most people come to me with an idea, if that makes sense, um, mm-hmm. because they're like, I have seen this from a styled shoot or another client and I want to duplicate it in a different way um, yeah. or the same way. And like something really fun is I'm about to come to San Francisco and someone saw a shoot that I did with a couple playing tennis and now they want to play basketball and have it shot on Super 8, which I just think yeah. is really fun. And yeah. so... Um, I think activities are useful, but they aren't necessary. Mm -hmm. So I think that being able to suggest things is helpful. And especially if you are more worried, like if you're kind of in the beginning stages of storytelling, I would definitely be like, I would love to encourage you guys to pick between one of these three things. Um, Because then they're kind of like picking a choice versus saying yes or no. Mm -hmm. Um, So just to start out with, and then as you kind of develop and learn, like you'll be able to kind of go to a landscape more so. And if they don't bring anything or show up with anything, you're still able to work with it because you're focusing Mm -hmm. like, now I focus more on like hands and emotions Mm -hmm. and reactions and like the physical things around in the location that they can use or like mold to. So, um, yeah. I love that. That's so good. That's so good. Well, and I, um, oh no, my thought it's slipping away. (laughs) (laughs) It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. Do you need me to jump in? No, you were saying something. Yes, she was saying something. 
Nope, it's gone. You go. <laughs> okay. I'll, 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 I'll jump in here in a second. I you love go. that. I think that's so good. And especially, I feel like the the preface of like, hey, if you're in a season where, you know, that's not been represented in your work at all, it can be like your clients are like, oh no, I, I want the the mm-hmm. Christmas JCPenney set up in front of the, like, I don't want any th- mm-hmm. storytelling. What is that? You know, so sometimes it's like, you do kind of have to like either do the style, choose the creative shoots or like slowly be like, hey, so this is how you're going to get these really true to you photos. And it like, all I- starts in the education portion yeah. and yeah. marketing yeah. on the front end of yes. like your website, your Amen. pricing guide, your email mm-hmm. copy. Like you have to, Absolutely. you can't just wait magically for a client that wants that to yeah. come to you. And especially if you're not showing that, mm-hmm. they're not going to, they're not, they don't understand it, especially if you're like, you're not in the photography world and you're not a photographer. How, how do you know the difference between editorial and documentary and, you know, like posed versus unposed? Right. Like, how Which do is you, why you know style nothing? Style shoots, yeah. not to beat a dead horse, but style shoots. <laughs> like, are right. relevant get, for that reason. Yeah. yeah. I love and like, that. what I would say with that too is when I knew that that actually, like, I knew that I was going to get clients that understood my messaging, wanted that kind of stuff was exactly by my inquiry forms. Like the difference Mm -hmm. went from like, hey, we're looking for a photographer for our wedding to like, we love unposed documentary style, timeless vintage photos. And that's like, we know you can do that. And that's why we want to hire you. So it's like the language you see already come in before you even work with the client lets you know exactly where they're at and what they're looking for and if it's aligned Mm -hmm. or not. And so it's like, you know, if your problem is like, you're not even getting inquiries that are saying that, it's then like a marketing and like styled shoot problem probably. Yeah. So, yeah. That's so good. Oh, th- I remember what I was going to say. It was just that I really like that you, the the prop thing, you didn't lean too much on props, but even in a situation where there's nothing, like a, like an example, like you're at a lake or you're mm-hmm. at a field and there's not like things. Um, I like that your ultimate goal is to focus on the couple and their story, which, you know, Mm -hmm. obviously comes through with questionnaires. It's like, you're not just trying to take them to the most beautiful location possible or, you know, here's my list of beautiful locations. Pick one. Okay, great. It's like you're customizing Mm -hmm. the location and then also even the activity or even just like the direction that is a part of the activity to Mm -hmm. your couple and what they're doing, Mm -hmm. um, which is where that storytelling naturally comes out. Mm Mm-hmm. That's Absolutely. So and I think too, like just quickly touching on like wedding days. So I pretty much recognize like I personally work best when I have space and time and weddings can be really hectic. So a lot of times I personally off the clock show up early and I'm yeah. prepared mentally, physically in person. I've gathered their details and I'm physically looking at them. Like I know yeah. what they, like I always start with details and I always require an hour to do them. So like when they're building out their timeline, if they want to move anything, that's it's fine. They just can't remove details unless they just don't want details at all. Mm-hmm. I have a question. <laughs> well, she just like, raises her hand. <laughs> no, this is good. So when you're, and, and this, I, I'm thinking if you have a, a inquiry and maybe at this point you, you don't get this, but if you have an inquiry that's like, they love your style um, and they want you, but then they're like, say, um, they're like, okay, but I, I want you for like four hours and it's like a full on wedding day. Or maybe that's again, based on your pricing and structure, that's not possible. But like, say that they, they want your style, but they, you look at like what they're planning or they even say like on a console call, they're like, I want a full day documentation, but I'm only going to hire you for four right, hours. But my budget <laughs> is this much. And so they're, therefore I can only afford like four or even six hours. Maybe yeah. uh, like something like that, where it's like their, their monetary constraints mm-hmm. are forcing like the timeline. Cause I feel like this happens so much that it's forcing the timeline to be rushed because they're trying mm-hmm. to get the maximum amount out of you because they only have a certain amount of budget. And wedding photography is expensive. Let's all just but, be honest yeah, here. It is, it <laughs> is. But in order to get the art that they're wanting, it, it, forces you to slow down a little bit. I mean, obviously we can, you know, force it to an extent, but like, how do you handle that, that balance? Yeah, that's awesome. So I've been there in the past. At this point, I don't do anything under eight hours. So just to prevent that basically, um, because I do know how, like I work best and like, you know, have I done that before? Yes. Like, you know, I had a client that booked me like a year and a half or two years ago that literally two weekends ago was a six hour wedding and they wanted no details. And it was like a very rough, rush day in in general, 
But it became like, you know, I showed up early for it again. Like, even though I was, it was un, technically unpaid time, like I'm there to scout and be able to look at everything. Um, yeah. I think it's just important. Like, especially when you're getting paid your worth, you're willing to do those things for free yep. um, in order to serve them really well. Mm-hmm. So again, like it's, it's just something that prepares you well, also just allows you to like get a lay of the land and serve your client well in that way. And then during the things, it's like, you know, you practice an off season and through styled shoots to prepare for that day. So it's like, you know, you have to be placed in a fast paced environment to know, like I'm watching like reactions, people. And I know, even though there's probably a hundred people facing me right now, I know what thing my camera should be on. um, Cause I'm not, I can't take photos of a hundred people at the same time. So like, you know, it's kind of through second shooting, like styled shoots and just like practice. Honestly, you have to learn to observe quickly and rapidly Mm -hmm. and be able to get there. Um, and like, sometimes that's me physically running. Sometimes that's me shooting from afar and getting like a nice, really like sweet, like almost from around a corner view. Mm -hmm. And again, that's like what storytelling kind of does is you start to see things in a new way and perspective that, you know, even though things are really busy, you are slowing down mentally. You're not scatterbrained. You're able to like condense everything that's going on and make that decisive decision of like, this is the photos that they're going to want in this moment Mm -hmm. more than everything else that's happening, which takes time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait. So I have a a, a question, thought, mostly question based on um, some, uh, what's it called? Narrative conversation, I guess, that's that's going around in the photography industry, which I am not going to say anything about my beliefs because I, I see both sides. I guess I just yeah. said whatever. <laughs> I see both sides. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I want to ta- ask you about this, Hannah, because of what you just said and kind of where you're at, especially in like your style of photography. So there's this whole conversation in the wedding industry of like, hey, your wedding day is not an eight-hour photo shoot. Like mm-hmm. your, your wedding day should not be at all about the photos. So like you shouldn't have to have, you know, 30 minutes for your romantic portraits or, you mm-hmm. know, whatever. Like it's, that's oh, not like what it's, it's about. It's, I, like it's you're saying that people are are saying against trying to force against your couple making to... space for I think photos specifically on a wedding day, mm-hmm. which again I see I see all sides of this conversation, but I'm really curious for you, Hannah, based on especially what you just said of like needing space to really like tell the story and like you know do the art, and I know that was coming from like hey I need my space, like I I need to not feel rushed personally. But what are your thoughts on that conversation? If you're familiar, I you're nodding in a way that's like I, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. um, so I feel like I don't need to expand on it any further. But like, what are your thoughts on that? Like the the conversation of it's not about the photographer and the photos, obviously. It's about the marriage and the wedding. But what are your thoughts in general? Yeah. So I do weddings both ways. So that being said, they're all throughout is like documentary style. However, Mm -hmm. like that six hour wedding I just shot, they were like, we don't want bridal party photos. We don't really care about bride and groom photos. Like we care about the day and the people. We don't really care about the details. Like again, it's like, it's an event. It's something to bring and celebrate that we are coming together before God with all of our people. And like, I love the couple that's like that. You know what I mean? Like it's Mm -hmm. awesome. And I think they truly will get the most out of their wedding day because they're so invested in the people. So I'm almost like it's more a perspective of like the client of like, they are so focused on that that they're going to get amazing photos. Are they going to get a ton of single photos of the bride and groom together in that scenario? Like, no, but they knew that and expected that. Um, And then on the like other side, Like, I think that, you know, let's say that you really, really want solo portraits of the bride and groom together, then I would say then like you have to plan for it. It's like something Mm -hmm. where you have to pull away from physically what's going on in the event or else you are going to miss those. Can I get tons of photos of you interacting with guests or running around and like excited after walking out of the ceremony? 100%. Like those are the documentary style moments. But when it comes to like, if there's something you're specifically wanting, like a bridal party photo with all members, it's not going to naturally happen unless like, you know, you all walked out of the ceremony at the same time, like literally all 24 of you or like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like it's no one's in the restroom or grabbing a drink. Like (laughs) they're all there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it like it becomes this thing of like 
I think that there's like a nice little medium, you know what I mean? Yeah. That I wish yeah. most people had of like, you know, it really becomes the bride and groom's perspective of like what they're wanting out of their wedding day. And like, I can shoot documentary style either way. The thing that is frustrating and I've done both, like I recently did a wedding where, um, you know, everything seemed to be really, really great. Wedding day was like completely a photo shoot. Like, you know, mm -hmm. every, like they still wanted documentary style, but like rented things for it, like wanted, like they pulled in these props that didn't serve a purpose. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't like a getaway prop or like that they actually like left in or like an umbrella that they wanted to use to like protect from the sun. Like it became like a, oh, we must use these things on our wedding day for the photos. And that's where I'm like, you're starting to lose that like yeah. level of documentary mm -hmm. style because it's like, it's forced. It is something yeah. you're quite literally bringing in to make a good shot. And so that's where I'm like, they didn't enjoy their wedding day to the fullest. And I could yeah. see it through every ounce. Like they were so worried about, you know, X, Y, and Z in their photos that they lost this opportunity to like love on the people that came and have like such a fun celebration and yeah. feel loved by people because they wanted to be out alone taking photos for you know, hours and hours and hours. Yeah. So I think it becomes this like balance of like, no one's right, no one's wrong. It's just mm -hmm. like documentary style becomes a lot easier when the couple is like, we are focused on having an amazing day that we're going to remember together forever. And yeah. we'll celebrate, we'll have our people. And it's like an amazing day. And the photos are just like a bonus. Like yeah. you're just capturing what I am doing. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of people do have a lot of like hot takes on that. Yeah, um, it's and I, hot topic. <laughs> I definitely have seen like all the hot takes and stuff yeah. like that. But I, I think that like coming from someone who is like right now primarily like documentary style like yeah the more invested you are in your day and less invested in a perfect photo mm -hmm. then you're gonna get those photos that you love that are more yep. candid yeah that's perfect. so good I also want to throw in there personally as a photographer if I hear a client is really wanting those really candid documentary style photos for their wedding day but they also like are sending me a lot of inspiration photos or something that mm -hmm. they're like they clearly want a bit more like of a stylized kind of like photo shoot vibe then I will tell them like hey here's you know here's what you're gonna get here's the the yep. pro and con I would highly suggest a romance session, which is what I call like my like day after session or something. And I'm yeah. like, I would shift it and I would do something like this way. You like can less be fully present. Time on the yeah. day. Yeah. And like, you're not worried about like, you know, getting back to your guests versus using all the props. I'm like, let's schedule another time where we take like an hour, two, three to, mm -hmm. you know, you dress back up. Let's do it like a couple months after your wedding. Cause you know, there's always a little down after a wedding, after you've planned it. And it's like this big thing. Like let's, yeah. and I like communicate that to them. And I'm like, let's do that. And like, this can be a great way for you to get the best of both worlds mm -hmm. and not sacrifice like your actual wedding day and the meaning of it and your people that have all gathered there to celebrate with you. And you get like everything that you want. So I feel like there's also a way to communicate it and be like, Hey, if you're wanting really editorial and you want that like that rental and this thing and that prop mm -hmm. and this you know like let's stylize a session let's do a romance mm -hmm. session for you too so yeah. I think there's a way to do it both and you just it comes down to as the photographer understanding and being able to pick out like oh you're wanting you're saying you want this mm -hmm. but these yep. are a lot of your photos and I need to communicate to you that if you're wanting this then this might not have this might get in the way this like you just have to be aware you have to pay attention and you have to communicate I feel which like. I feel like Absolutely. if most photographers did that in all regards not even just about like the style that communication, like all the yeah. expectations that, that, like the horror stories that happened yeah. on wedding days like would be solved because they would be saying, okay, this is your choice. This is what the, the outcome of that choice means. Yeah. Are you mm -hmm. good with that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And like, again, your style doesn't have to change according mm -hmm. to that. It's just more so like you're saying, like the education portion. Yeah, like totally. I literally have a wedding this Saturday where they have marked out like three and a half hours for bride and groom photos before the ceremony. Like they're wow. like, we want to do all the things. We just want to play. We want to explore. And like, we'll get ready with our people, but we don't need photos like with yeah. them. Like we're just yeah. going to go explore. And I'm like, perfect. We've like set it up to a place where we have mm -hmm. the freedom to do that. We get to have so much fun exploring and you know the expectation that you are not getting photos of you standing outside with your bridal party. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like all lined up. So again, it's like, it really is that like education piece for sure. Yeah. Oh, I that's amazing. That. Hannah, you yeah. have been incredible. This has been like such a great conversation. <laughs> so good. We could talk to you for like 10 hours. I know. We, let's go Joe Rogan style now. All right, hour two. Let's go. I'm just <laughs> um, to end each episode, we ask a couple of questions to every guest. The first one is, what is the favorite or what is a favorite book that you've read recently? If you're oh a gosh. reader. 
Yeah. So I'm becoming more of a reader. I used to be, and then it just like plateaued over the years and then it's starting to come back, especially like Love with it. education stuff. Um, so I would say, so I'm like in the second time of reading this book, I feel like everyone probably knows of it at this point. Um, but it's a hundred million offers by Alex Hermosi. And like, you know, I think it's one of those books where you take all these pieces of things that you are like trying to figure out on your own. And then you're like, you said it exactly how I was like thinking. And that's how that book feels like to me is like, you know, especially as you're building out your offers and all these things, that book has definitely changed my perspective and also like helped just realign my perspective when it comes to pricing and offers and all that kind of stuff. That's so good. I feel like that's one of those books that is so meaty too, that you can reread it many times and you'll get different things out of it because it's like so much. I'm staring at it as we're talking, which is funny. Okay. Oh yeah, it's in my office. We're like staring at it like across the room, like in the stack of books. I love it. Okay. The next question is, what is the biggest lesson that you've learned in business? Mm, That's such a good question. Um, I think that we all like end like have this level of comparison that we go through mm-hmm. and it's like you know you can get on we're just bombarded at this point in life where like you could get on social media for one second and see 15 people that you think are like doing better than you or yeah. has beautiful work and you just feel terrible about yourself and it's never going to stop like you know what i mean like social media video yeah. content all this stuff is never going to stop so i think like one of the best things you can do for your business is learning those boundaries of like how do i separate you know, what I'm doing and what I'm trying to go from like what everyone else is doing. Um, Mm -hmm. There's a level of like connection and community that you need. But when comparison is there, it is quite literally like the thief of joy. And so, you know, if you want to have joy in your life and feel like you can be creative and enjoy like the things that you are doing, it's going to take that time to be able to figure out like, how do you put blinders on in those things? And how do you find the people that are running the race and going to encourage you and not kind of like cut you down in the race? So yeah. I would definitely say like that, yeah, figuring out the best way to stop that comparison, like (laughs) cycle is one of the Mm -hmm. best things you can do for your business life. Amen. So good. I love it. Oh man. Hannah, thank you so much for being here. Of course. Thank you for giving our listeners just like the best gold, especially Mm -hmm. if they are photographers. So thank you so much. Yeah. Um, Where can everyone find you, learn from you, stalk your freaking beautiful work because it's (laughs) unreal, stupid, beautiful. Um, Where can they find you? Oh, you guys are so sweet. I'm on Instagram. My name's Hannah Rosser Photography or website is hannahrosser.com. Also, if anybody has... uh, gone to our heart shop and you've looked at our editorial templates, the photos in said editorial templates are (laughs) Miss Hannah's over here. So (laughs) she's just a queen. She's a queen. We (laughs) love you, Hannah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and your expertise. We are just so grateful. Thank you guys so much. You guys have been amazing. You're the best.